This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. Welcome along. This session is all about the answers to exercise 3, which was on simple 2D plotting. So question 1, plot the following functions. And with each of these functions, we need to decide on a suitable range for x, depending on the function that we're plotting. So for the first one, y equals 1 over x, we're going to define x as a range between minus 10 and 10 in steps of 1. And then we're going to define y to be 1 over x. Not forgetting the dot operator, because of course x is a vector. And we're asked to plot this function with a blue dashed line, and of course label our axis and give it a title. So in these examples I'm going to do most of this from the command line, but of course you can open the figure and do all this interactively if you prefer. So we're going to plot x against y with the grid on, and we'll just label up the axis. And not forgetting that we need to plot this with a blue dashed line. And we see a graph of y equals 1 upon x. So we're going to save these figures using the matlab.figure extension. And that means we can open it up at a later date and edit it if we need to. So we'll just choose File and Save As. And we'll call this question 1A. So between questions, we need to make sure that we clear the workspace and we'll also clear the command window with the clear all and CLC commands. So the second plot in one is a sine and cosine plot. So this time we'll define x using the linspace function and we'll define it from 0 to 2 pi since this is a trigonometric function and we'll do that in 25 steps. So our y is simply sine x dot times cos x. And we'll just use our up arrow to retrieve the plotting command and change the titles. This time we're asked to make our plot with a red dotted line. And we'll save our new plot. We'll clear the command window again. And our final plot is a quadratic function. So this time we'll define x to range from minus 10 in steps of 1 to 10. And y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And this is to be plotted with red cross markers. So question two, given the following function, s, plot s as a function of angle phi when a is 1, b is 1.5, and c is 0.3, and phi ranges between 0 and 360 degrees. So we'll first of all define phi. It's going to range from 0 to 360 degrees. Now you'll notice that I omit the step size here. 
And if you omit the step size when you're defining a range, MATLAB just assumes that you want a step size of 1, which is fine in this case. So now we'll define our constants. And now we can define s. And what we're going to do, because we've defined phi in degrees, we'll use the d version of the trigonometric functions, which take degrees as an argument as opposed to radians. So we've got a times cos d phi. And again, we'll use the up arrow to get back our plot command. And we'll plot this function just using a red solid line. And you'll see that I get an error here because I've tried to plot x against y. And what I really wanted to do was plot phi against s. So question 3 is all about plotting parametric functions and we're told that we'll need to use the axis equal command. Now all that does is it makes the tick marks on the x and the y axis the same spacing. So the first part of 3 is to plot a circle of radius 5. So we'll set the radius of our circle first. We'll define theta using the linspace function. We'll take 100 steps. And if you've forgotten the formulas for a circle, you can go back and look at exercise 2, question 7. But they are x equals r times cos theta and y equals r times sine theta. So we'll go back into the command history and we'll drag out our plot command with x and y. and we'll just plot it with a blue line this time. Now you'll notice that it looks like a bit of an oval and that's because we forgot to use the axis equal command. So I'll just close the figure and go back to our plot command and add axis equal at the end. And now you can see when it plots we get a circle. So in a similar fashion, we're asked to plot a lemon skate. This time, phi ranges between minus pi over 4 and pi over 4. Now, it's up to you how many steps you use when you're plotting. The less steps that you use, the coarser the plot will be. So you need to decide on an appropriate value, and that's sometimes a case of experimentation. So we need to go and define x and y now. And there we get a plot of a lemon skate. So three part C is to plot a logarithmic spiral. And we're told that phi ranges from 0 to 6 pi. And that k equals 0 0.1, constant. So we'll just go ahead and define x and y. And we get a plot of a logarithmic spiral. And you can see here, perhaps I haven't chosen enough values for phi because the, the plot is a little bit rough. So what I can do is just close the figure and I'll go into my command history and find my definition of phi. Just drag that back to the command window and I'll choose 100 points. I also need to redefine x and y now that I have more values of phi. So I can just double click x and double click y 
and then double click our plot command. And now we get a much smoother logarithmic spiral. So the last thing we'll do is just save that. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.